Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, this is Major Herr. Uh, this is the, the first recorded video for uh, Material 685, uh, Material Selection and Processing. Um, I want to welcome you to the course and uh, use this video as kind of a test. Um, I uh, have never taught a uh, distance learning course before, and um, you probably have never taken one while at AFIT. So this will be a first for all of us. Um, and uh, I'm recording this video with an application um, called Panopto. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to try to share my screen in a little while. Um, and use this first video as an opportunity to kind of introduce uh, my initial thoughts on how to run this course and um, uh, what applications to use and how to make things available to you and how to interact um, remotely. Uh, uh, and make the best use of, of our time. Um, and so I hope you all are uh, staying safe, that you are uh, following uh, the, the guidelines for social distancing so that we can all uh, return back to some semblance of normal um, as soon as possible. Um, you'll see here that uh, I am in uniform. I did shave this morning. Um, um, and my wife gave me this haircut. So um, trying to maintain uh, standards as much as possible. Um, and so um, and that's based on the guidance from, uh, from Colonel McQuaid. I don't know if you, if you tuned in to the uh, AFIT Town Hall the other day. Um, I, as, we'll, as we'll talk about a little bit later in the video, um, I'm not structuring this to have a, a high degree of uh, video teleconferencing. Uh, most of my uh, interaction, uh, well, you'll see a lot more of me than you will uh, me of you. Uh, that being said, um, when we do have video telecons, right, the expectation from that is that, uh, um, you know, that you shave, that you're um, in uniform, um, at least for the class interactions. Um, and so, like I said, I'm going to use this video to uh, kind of review the syllabus a little bit, and so I'm going to try uh, here within this, this application to uh, switch my uh, video feed to a, a picture in picture and then share with you um, my screen. Hopefully that worked. Uh, I'll be able to check it before I post it. But uh, hopefully you can see um, my face down in the bottom right hand corner and um, a PDF of the syllabus. Now this is posted on Canvas. It's also the Canvas um, uh, homepage. Um, and this should look familiar. All of you have had um, a course with me before. Um, most of you were in my uh, winter course, uh, 680 and uh, Major Alliance, or um, you were uh, in my fall course. So. Um, which I, I see as an, as an advantage because uh, we all know each other, which is which is um, helpful uh, now that we are uh, separated by some some distance. Uh, but here's a, a typical syllabus that I that I use. Um, this quarter, um, as you all know, the uh, the start is delayed, and so since we're pushed back to a um, I did. I owe you guys an updated copy. I did not update the end date. So we're starting on 20 April. We are not finishing on 26 May. Um, as you'll see down here in the uh, lecture schedule, um, we're actually running all the way out to 26 June. So I'll be posting an updated uh, copy of the syllabus um, today. But anyway, so um, as I said in my, uh, my email to you guys, uh, I'm going to be primarily using, at least my initial plan, is to primarily use um, free applications, uh, Canvas, which we have been using all along. Um, that will be for, uh, for posting things like the syllabus, uh, homework assignments, lecture notes, 
and hopefully here um, in a little while lecture videos if this works. And then the Microsoft Teams um, is going to be used for uh, communication. So uh, I have a, a um, an account provided by Air University, and I've added all of you guys using whatever email you preferred um, as as guest users. So within that, um, we can I can uh, post announcements. You guys can ask questions. We can have uh, chats and also uh, uh, voice and video calls. And so um, my intention is not to use that those video calls as um, some sort of a remote class meeting time at a set time. Um, I don't want to take away the flexibility of you guys to review this material at your leisure. And so um, that is um, going to be used to uh, make myself available to you for questions. Um, and so in lieu of office hours, uh, which normally I make as the hour after class, in case I want to say after class um, and, and ask questions. Um, um, instead, uh, what I'm going to do is to make sure that for, uh, for one hour, three times a week, um, I'm going to set aside to be logged on to Microsoft Teams um, at my computer available for um, for chats or calls or video calls um, uh, regarding uh, questions about the material, the homeworks, or um, et cetera. Um, that is uh, not meant to be the only meant to be the only time that I am available to answer questions. Um, and so I've provided uh, my personal cell phone and my personal email. Um, and so don't feel like you can't call or text my cell. Um, uh, a text first is probably um, it's probably best, um, and then if um, if it's a good time, then um, then we can follow that up with with phone call, or we can just set up a time to have a call um, to discuss um, the material or the questions, or whatever. Um, but uh, but for video calls, probably that 10 to 11, three times a week um, is the best bet. And uh, I should preface all of this by saying that um, this is all just an initial idea of how to run the course. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the most convenient or the best way to run it, and so uh, we will evaluate as we go. Please don't be afraid to uh, give me you know, feedback on, you know, hey, the videos are terrible, or I can't get this to work, or this is really clunky. Here's another application. Maybe you will like better, because um, I've never done this before, and uh, this is just my first, my first iteration. So, um, all feedback is welcome. But to um, to shift from talking about kind of how to run how to run the course and talk about uh, the course itself, right? So I always uh, in my syllabi I always post the course description. And when um, when uh, you know I'm assigned to uh, teach a course, right? Pretty much the only thing that's provided are generic student outcomes and then course description. And so um, I always start from the course descriptions because I want the course, you know, I kind of want what you get to be, you know, what's advertised. Um, and so here is the course description from the AFIC catalog. And I've highlighted a couple of things which I kind of use as guiding principles for you know, selecting text and, 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 the, and working through the material. But like the, 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 the title of the course, um, indicates, right, we're talking about selection and processing of materials, right? And so um, in studying that, right, we're going to introduce you to all of the principles, not all, but some of the principles, core principles and techniques um, that are made, made use of um, in processing materials um, to have certain properties. And those properties come from um, uh, how the uh, material is is processed, right? Um, if I scroll down a little bit here, right, there is a key down here in the case studies, right? I, I allude to it. There's a key relationship here and, and sort of um, a framework for, for thinking about materials processing. And that's that if you start, if you want to get a certain amount of performance, right, you need certain properties. And materials get their properties from their 
nano and microstructure. And to develop that nano and microstructure, right, we need to follow a very um, precise set of processing steps. Um, and so the goal of the course, right, is to tie the ultimate properties that uh, materials have, right, uh, the understanding of that all the way back to the processing techniques, right, at, at the beginning. And we'll do this for, um, for both electronic and structural materials. Um, the class will be broken roughly in half um, around these two <coughs> uh, types of materials. And that reflects you know, the, the students that, that are in this course. Right? It's um, roughly half materials, um, which are, uh, which, who are uh, focused on uh, structural uh, materials mostly, and uh, electronic or uh, electrical engineers, which are interested in electronic properties of materials. And so the first half will be covering the structural materials in the midterm exam. I'll spend a few um, lectures talking about uh, methods for selecting the right material, um, and then we'll jump into um, uh, techniques for electronic uh, materials processing. <clears throat> and so the course objectives here, um, first and foremost, we want, we want to provide um, a basic understanding of the principles and techniques um, used to select materials and then process them both, both for structural and electronic materials. Um, if you come from a strong material science background, um, you may find that much of this material is reviewed. Um, and this course is, um, is included in this curriculum because it's quite common for students to come to material science at the master's degree level from any number of different backgrounds. Um, mechanical engineering, uh, chemistry, aeronautical engineering, pretty much any, any engineering, right, you can transition to material science because you know, when you engineer, uh, things you need to use materials to make them out of. Um, but that means that you may not have taken core material science classes, or it, may have, you know, it might have only been one class from your undergraduate. And so this class is included to, uh, as, a re as a refresher and to make sure that everybody has this kind of um, um, fundamental understanding of materials processing. Um, <clears throat> and, um, right, making sure everyone has a, a solid um, a solid foundation uh, of understanding for these techniques um, also helps to provide a conceptual framework, right? So uh, in your research, right, you're going to go beyond the topics that we covered here. Um, but my hope is, is that the idea is going to reform um, a foundation or conceptual framework for you to, uh, to use in understanding those more complex systems and more complex materials. Um, and the selection uh, portion, right, will hopefully be helpful if in the future, um, when you hear at AFID or later in your career, um, you need to make s uh, decisions about selecting various materials. And um, reflecting our two divergent topics, um, the, there, there doesn't exist a text out there that covers um, both uh, processing of structural materials and processing of electronic materials um, at the level that we need for this course. And so um, I'm... Uh, I need, I, I need two texts to teach this course. Um, the first one is the one that I listed in WebAdvisor, and that's probably the one that you um, have already um, purchased 
if you have already purchased the text. That's uh, Material Science and Engineering an Introduction by Callister and Rethwich. Um, this is a text that is used quite commonly uh, for undergraduate uh, material science. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to use it here because, again, we're, we are making sure that everybody has that solid undergraduate background. And we're going to be covering it quite quickly, right? So instead of uh, using it to cover uh, to, uh, in a course that might last a semester, um, you know, we'll be covering this in half of a quarter, right? So what perhaps we lose in depth, right, we are going to make up for it in breadth. Um, and what you'll find is that we'll cover most of this text and we'll do it in, in one lecture per chapter. Um, so we'll be moving quite, quite quickly. Um, you may also notice that the, the, um, if you look up this book, that um, I have not specified the most current edition. And I've done that intentionally, and that's because uh, this is one of those texts that they publish a new edition every two or three years, and all they do is add a chapter here or there, maybe tweak some things, change some homework problems, um, and then the newest edition goes for under $50-$200. And that, to me, um, is ridiculous. And so uh, the 8th edition, I believe they're on the 10th or 11th, the 8th edition is just fine. Um, and you should be able to find a hard copy, um, a hard um, um, bound copy on Amazon for $20 or $30. Um, you may be able also um, to find um, a PDF version um, out there somewhere. And um, also the 8th edition is nice because they have, um, with this textbook, been playing around with uh, hybrid uh, book slash website slash online content um, in some of the editions. And so the ninth edition is heavily abridged, and most of them, you know, at least half of the material, I think, is designed to be accessed online. Um, the tenth edition, I think, is, is similar to that. But the eighth edition, if you buy the book, you get all the material in the book, which um, I think is preferred. Um, especially since if we're going to buy a used copy, there's no guarantee that you get the code or that those websites are being maintained, etc. So that's why I've chosen that book. And um, the second is a um, is a text about microelectronic fabrication. Uh, Campbell is another uh, professor who has a number of different texts on this or, or related topics. Um, our EE students may recognize that name. Um, they may have had textbooks from other courses that have um, uh, Campbell as an author. Um, and again, this is one that, that is a little bit older, but that is not a detriment to this class because we are focused on introduction to, these, to this topic. And um, the underlying uh, fundamentals uh, had not changed um, since that book was uh, was published, and also this is going to be much more accessible, both in uh, price of used copies and uh, prevalence of um, you know, PDF versions that, that you may find. <coughs> okay, um, homework sets. So here's one area where, um, as we go, we may find better ways of doing things. Um, as you know from uh, previous uh, courses, um, the homeworks that I assign are if are from the book if the problems are suitable. Um, and um, and for these two textbooks, I do use um, the the provided homework problems uh, for the most part. And my initial thought on submission is just to. Um, replicate what I've done in, in person. So um, I'm going to post a PDF with homework problems um, on Canvas. You guys can access them there. Um, complete them however you like, whether you'd like to uh, do it uh, by hand and then scan, or uh, do it on a tablet computer, or um, type them up. Um, how, you, how you complete the homework is, is pretty much up to you. Um, and then, um, because we are DL now, we'll need to be uh, we need to submit those electronically. 
Uh, my initial thought is the easiest would be to just send them as an email attachment. That would allow you flexibility in whatever file type you're using. Um, there's also a capability to um, collect assignments within uh, Canvas. Um, that is not something that I have tried, um, but, um, but I may use this opportunity uh, to try that functionality for at least one of the assignments to see um, how, how easy it is. Um, feel free to collaborate um, with one another um, as best you can, um, but I ask that you do make an effort to try to find things um, on your own first and also um, right, asking, asking questions uh, of me is, is encouraged. Um, so I also, um, as a part of this course, towards the end, would like to give you guys an opportunity um, to present using some of these online tools. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is an activity that I try to incorporate into my courses. We did this um, last year, and that is to present a case study. Um, if you were in my class last quarter, right, we did our paper briefs. Um, this is a similar thing, although not necessarily about your particular research. But what it does is it applies the principles that we're talking about in this class to uh, real life, right? Um, and uh, in normal, you know, normal development cycles, you know, normal research, um, you may only be working on a teeny tiny piece of some materials development effort. Um, and so you don't necessarily see the full picture. And so here, right, I'd like to help to make that connection between processing, structure, properties, and performance. Um, but your particular research may only work in a, in a small part of that. So instead of having a paper brief where we drill down to some particular very specific problem that we're researching here, we're going to take a step back and look at the development of an entire uh, type of material um, and, and view it as, as a case study, right? So um, for all these, you know, for many materials that are prevalent today, right, they didn't always exist. And um, there was some development process to bring them into existence, right? Um, there needed to be a need for a new material, right? Or, or a discovery. Um, and then um, work done to research it and develop it, right? To, to um, you know, to encounter processing uh, challenges and then innovate and uh, come up with new ways of doing things to, to overcome those challenges, um, to ultimately produce a material that has the right uh, structure, microstructure, that gives us the right properties that allows us to achieve the performance to um, uh, build, you know, some, some new structure, some new uh, device. Um, and so the goal uh, of this case study is for each of you to make a short presentation about, you know, 15 minutes or so um, to enable the class to kind of see um, a cross-section of various different materials um, kind of from, uh, from cradle to their current form. Um, and that will be uh, towards the end of the class, right at the end of the quarter. Um, exams. So because we're separated, um, I won't be able to do my typical exam, which, as you guys know, um, I lean towards in-class, closed book, closed note exams. Um, I make that uh, choice consciously uh, because of the nature of uh, the material in the material science curriculum. A lot of it is broad and not deep. And what we're doing is kind of building up uh, working knowledge of materials, material science, but things that um, are helpful to kind of have um, um, in your working knowledge that, that you wouldn't necessarily have to look up or review um, that you could make use of, right? And I explained this um, in, in the 680, right? Like if, if you're sitting in a, in a talk and someone's talking about a various, um, you know, certain 
uh, characterization technique, right, it's really helpful if you kind of know right away kind of what they're talking about so that you can focus on the point that they're making, the results that they're presenting, and not necessarily trying to remember or figure out what is this technique that they're using, right? It's something that you'll just, you'll just kind of know. Um, and I think that um, having to prepare um, for an exam where you don't have a lot of materials that you can lean on helps to develop that working knowledge. So I would like to stick with that, and I think we can do it because um, we have um, high standards of integrity, and so I feel fairly comfortable um, posting an exam with instructions um, that it be timed and that you have uh, no access to uh, you know, notes or your textbook. Um, and I, you know, I feel confident given the high integrity standards of our profession and of each of you as individuals that, uh, that I can do that and, and you will, um, that it will be successful. And so my initial plan is to do what I would normally do in class, just with everybody individually. So that would be a one hour uh, self-administered midterm exam taken halfway uh, through the quarter uh, between our structural and electronic materials switch over. And then during finals week, we'll have the same thing except it'll be a, uh, a three hour final exam, um, close book, close notes, uh, self-administered, self-time. Um, the midterm will be more of a time crunch than the final will. Um, usually the final exam is about 50% longer than the midterm because you have three times as much time, right? So it's generally not a time crunch. And as far as grading goes, um, I'm going to break it down 10% um, for the case study and then 30% each for the homeworks, midterm, midterm exam, and the final exam. Um, on the next page, I have the lecture schedule. And so most of these will be delivered just like I am now um, via uh, posted video, um, hopefully generated with uh, this Pinanto, um, uh software. Uh, so this video covers right half of the first class. This is just the intro and the syllabus. Um, normally, uh, I would cover the intro and then jump into uh, the overview of the first block of material and cover chapter one. Um, for this uh, uh, this year, I'm just going to do the syllabus video. This is kind of a test. I'm going to try to post it before the quarter starts, just to make sure that everything's working properly. You guys can I can generate the video. You guys can access it. So there will be a second video covering the chapter one material that I will post by Monday of next week, April 20th. And then, as you see. Um, I'm going to try to stick to the one hour a day, four days a week schedule and have the videos posted no later than the morning of the day listed here. Um, hopefully a day or two before that if I can keep up with the videos. Um, and so here we've got um, right, uh, four day weeks as we're marching through uh, the Callister texts. Um, some of the chapters I um, combine, um, and uh, that's uh, mostly because this is material that we have seen before, um, especially when we talk about defects and crystals, tone structure, right? this is very foundational, um, and so I think it, it, um, it bears reviewing, um, especially if it's a different textbook, different context, slightly different, um, but we don't need a whole, a whole quarter or a whole class. Um, so, right, atomic structure, as we kind of build from the bottom up, atomic structure, crystals, uh, diffusion, and then we'll talk about uh, the development process and required um, for uh, different material properties, right? So we'll have mechanic properties uh, of materials, uh, which is a big one that covers probably five or six lectures, and then we'll look at ceramics, polymers, composites. That will, um, and then finish. We'll finish it with a, you know, a day spent talking about corrosion. Um, and then here's kind of where we'll stop with the testable material, and we'll have a couple of days where I transition and talk about 
some material, a material selection paradigm that is uh, suggested by um, a gentleman by the name of Ashby um, and go through uh, some examples. Now, generally, this was uh, an introduction for how one might select the material and was not testable, right? So I'm using this as a way of putting some time between the conclusion of our testable material before the midterm is posted. And just the way that the schedule kind of fell out, there actually quite a bit of time from the end of the testable material until the midterm was actually uh, provided because it happens to also fall over the Monday weekend. Uh, normally, I would like to put a, an exam of the, the day before a long weekend, not the day after. Um, but none of us are going to be going anywhere. And um, I want to make sure that you guys have as much time as possible to prepare for the exam. Um, if you choose to do all of your studying and then take a nice long weekend to relax, that's perfectly fine. But if you choose to review it, then you can actually have that opportunity. So the midterm will be given the Tuesday after the long weekend. Um, and then we'll jump into our electronic properties of uh, electronic material processing, um, the Campbell text. And here we'll start at, uh, at the beginning. Um, and mostly, each chapter will cover a processing technique. Um, so after we introduce semiconductors, we talk about crystal growth, um, and then look at each of the uh, process steps that are used in the microfabrication. So oxidation, um, ion implantation, um, diffusion, kind of, we, we will have already talked about. Um, and then uh, rapid thermal processing, lithography. Um, that's kind of that's broken down in very a couple of steps because you have both photoresist and then also non-optical lithography. Um, uh, then generate uh, talk about vacuums and plasma etching, um, the deposition of coatings, whether it's through physical vapor deposition or chemical vapor deposition, vapor deposition or epitaxy. And then when you put all of those um, techniques together, right, and then you've got um, various uh, devices, which we will um, look at briefly. And then right here at the end, uh, a couple of uh, a lecture or two um, about nanomaterials. So microfabrication, right, is at the, the micron scale. Nanofabrication is, right, several orders of magnitude smaller, right, and is in emerging, evolving, rapidly evolving field where we can start to manipulate materials right at the nano scale, right? So we'll talk a little bit about the unique property you get, you can get when you uh, can build structure on those level, on those scales, right? And then an introduction of, kind of how you might do that. Um, that will conclude the um, material, the testable material. And for the last few uh, class meetings or class time, um, we'll do two days worth of case studies. So that's uh, 10 or 15 minutes video telecon presentation um, uh, for each of you about some material system, right, the development of it. And then we'll have the final day. We'll have a VTC Q&A where um, you guys can ask questions and I can review uh, some, of the, uh, some of the material uh, leading into the final exam. Right, similar to what I've done in my in-class courses. So that concludes the schedule. Um, and then I you know, want to quickly review um, the academic integrity um, and attendance and then the academic grievance. Right, this is kind of boilerplate for all syllabi. Um, the academic integrity is going to be especially important because um, we're not going to be seeing each other. Right, so just remember, right, that uh, you are held to a very high standard of academic integrity, right, and uh, your the maintenance of your integrity is more important than um, any grade, right. So, uh, especially in in, in a circumstance like this, where you know we post an exam, 
and it would be quite possible for you to make a choice that sacrifices your integrity. I encourage you to maintain that. Right? Um, Uh, not only would a violation be subject to uh, academic uh, discipline, administrative discipline for potentially use in J, um, but um, right, you would have your own conscience to do it. Um, and attendance will be a little bit different, right? So a lot of, there won't be as many, or actually only a few times where you have to be um, doing something at a particular time for this course. Um, if you choose to, uh, to never exercise the office hours, right, you could watch the videos at any point you want and submit at any, any, at any time. Um, except for the few um, class periods where we will have VTC. So that would be Q&A se sessions or the case studies, right? So you need to be logged in at the right time um, for those. Um, and then, of course, um, right, this, like I said at the beginning, this is just my initial plan, right? So please provide feedback on things that are working or not working, and I will try to adjust as possible to make this class um, as good as it can be um, given our, our, our circumstances. So um, I'm excited to be uh, teaching this course. Um, I think it's going to be good. I hope you guys learned some stuff. And I hope that uh, we can come out the other side of this quarantine with all of you guys still on track to, uh, to finish. And hopefully, you know, it will, it will even, you know, learn a little bit about, I know I will, learn a little bit about interacting and, um, and teaching and learning um, via, via distance learning. So uh, until the next video, um, I'll see you guys.